Mars. So when most people think about Mars, they think of a place that looks kind of like this. It's a flat plain, a bunch of rocks on it, kind of boring, you know, lots of dust. And, you know, I would forgive you if you too thought that Mars looked like this, because every time NASA lands on Mars, it's kind of the same, just a plane, you know. But I'll tell you a secret. Uh, NASA likes to land on a flat plane so that we don't crash. <laughs> you know, so it's like, it's really easy to land on a flat plane. Uh, but I study Mars for a living. It's my passion. Some people might say, my obsession. <laughs> but I look at pictures of Mars every day. Essentially, I spend more time on an average day on Mars than I spend on the Earth. And this is not the Mars that I know, that I'm familiar with. The Mars that I know has fissures, hundreds of kilometers long. It has fields of black sand dunes that make crazy patterns. It's got glaciers of ice that are covered in rocks. It's got these ridges. A lattice of ridges looks like an enormous spider web. Some of these ridges are taller than the Arc de Triomphe. And uh, so in the morning, if you are in the morning on Mars, then you see a canyon totally filled with fog. If you wait until the afternoon, you can see dust devils that can get up to 12 kilometers tall. That's a video from the rover. And during the day, you see the beautiful clouds passing by overhead. And if you wait until nighttime, you have two moons, two moons that you can see shining beautifully overhead. So did you know that Mars, the surface area of Mars, is actually the same surface area of the continents of the Earth? So that means you have an entire world totally empty, waiting for you. Not a single continent has been explored yet. So today I'm going to talk to you about three new worlds. And the first world is Mars as it is today. So when most people think about Mars, they think about this really far away planet that they'll never go to, essentially. But that's not the Mars that I know. The Mars that I know has six satellites that are orbiting around it right now. There's a telescope in orbit around Mars that can take pictures of the surface where you can see things the size of a dinner plate. And actually, anyone on the entire world, even all of you guys in this room, you can go on the internet and you can tell this camera to take a picture of whatever part of Mars you want, and the camera will do it. It's free. You can do it today. So there's uh, two rovers wandering around on Mars right now, and we actually have another lander that's going to land on Mars in 2018. And just wait, 2020, Everyone's going to Mars. I mean, everyone. So NASA is sending a rover to Mars. Europe and Russia are sending a rover to Mars. Chinese are going to Mars. Indians have a plan to go to Mars. The uh, United Arab Emirates are sending a mission to Mars. Even SpaceX, a private company, is planning on sending a mission to Mars in 2020. So the Mars is going to be completely covered in robots, essentially. <laughs> we, we talk about robots, but actually Mars is the only planet we know about that's completely inhabited by robots right now. So what NASA is trying to do in order to get ready, you know, humans are coming right behind the, all of those robots, essentially. And everybody's building rockets like crazy. We are building rockets. You know, SpaceX is building rockets. And uh, NASA is actually building a rocket called the Space Launch System. And the Space Launch System is the largest rocket ever built. And it's going to be tested in 2019, going around the moon, and then eventually bring people to Mars. And so what NASA wanted to do in order to get ready for this eventuality is they had a conference in 2015 where they invited a bunch of people to come and say, OK, we're going to go land on Mars. Where do we want to go? And they invited geologists and engineers and mining industry people. And of course, they invited me because I know everything about Mars. <laughs> so I came and I said, OK, guys, don't worry. I got this figured out. I have. This is where you should land. So I'm a geologist, and so I put a bunch of interesting rocks around so we can look at them. But I also said, don't worry, guys. I have a flat plane. I know you guys love flat planes. I have a place for you guys to put your houses. So that you can put them in these ridges at the top of the photo so that you can you know, be protected from radiation. There's actually some water in this area, so you know, that's a nice resource for people to have. Uh, you know, so I, f I figured it out. This is kind of what it might look like. This is a picture I took in China, and they have similar ridges in China, and people actually do live in them. So here's the door, 
And then, you know, I looked up close and I said, oh, the Chinese are ready to go to Mars. They have a satellite dish. <laughs> Talk to the people back home. They have some brooms for taking care of all the dust, you know. Uh, and so I helpfully photoshopped uh, a city on top of my landing site and some landing sites or whatever. I thought of some names like, you know, pour les Français, ça sera uh, la République en Mars. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I'm, I'm just joking. So I'm American, so it's going to be something like Freedom, Texas Eagle, or something, you know, <laughs> something like that. Um, but, you know, so I presented this to the NASA people, and I said, you're welcome. Here, I did all your work for you. And, uh, but the miners and the engineers, they actually ask different questions than I ask as a geologist. They kind of said, OK, um, where exactly is the water here? And, uh, you know, I was like, oh, you know, somewhere in this 100 kilometer square, you know. <laughs> and, they, and they said, well, OK, you know, we kind of have to know that. As a scientist, I'm like, eh, what's the difference? Same thing. And they said, you know, it makes a big difference if you're an astronaut and you're on the surface, you have a shovel, you know, like one meter, 100 kilometers. That's going to make a pretty big difference. <laughs> So, and they said they wanted to know everything. They wanted to know, okay, where is the water? Uh, what form is it in? Is it, how deep does it go? You know, like, how many sand dunes are between the place that we land and the place that we go and get the water? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> you know, like, that's not the Mars that I know. In fact, I realized at that moment that I don't know anything about Mars at all. <laughs> and, and like the amount of information that we know about Mars is absolutely incredible, but the amount of information that we must know about Mars in order to actually live there is a totally new level. So that's world number two. It's the world that we're just getting to know about Mars, the world that we must get to know about Mars in order to see the Mars that could be the Mars of the future, essentially. So when you're like me and you live with your feet on the Earth and your head on Mars, then you start to think of the Earth a little differently. And in my case, the Earth starts to become a bit annoying. So I'm like, ooh, I have these seasonal allergies. Like, that would never be a problem on Mars. You know? <laughs> and, and I think, like, ooh, I'm stuck in traffic. Like, there's no traffic on Mars. And I, I used to live in Paris, so, you know, the ceiling was made of wood and it had these wood beetles in it, and they would, like, fall on me in my sleep. <laughs> and I'd wake up and I'd say, like, ooh, there's no wood beetles on Mars. <laughs> you know, there's no wood on Mars, but there's no wood beetles. Uh, you know, but the Earth has some nice things about it as well. It has, like, you can go outside and breathe the air. That's pretty nice. And you know, you could be having like a really bad day on the Earth. You could be like, oh, I'm so sad, and I don't have any money. And there's like a rain cloud right over your head raining on you. And then, OK, but still, you're breathing air freely, and you're in an environment where you're, it's perfectly suited for your body. You don't have to wear a spacesuit. And then the most precious resource in the whole world, in the whole solar system, is literally falling from the sky. So that's great. I encourage you all to go outside. Take a deep breath, do the yogi exercises, <laughs> and just think about how lucky it is. Because if you think about the Earth, you know, people think about the Earth and they think about its problems. But that's not the Earth that I think about at all. The Earth is this little sheltered paradise that we live in. And beyond the Earth, there's, you know, we've found over 2,000 planets rotating around other stars. So. You talk about the world, like, that's not the world. The world is out there. The world is beyond. The universe is out there. And Mars is our first step that we can take into that universe. Alors, pour les Français, euh, le monde, la Terre, est une planète magnifique, mais c'est un monde parmi d'autres. Comme le disait si bien Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, la Terre est le berceau de l'humanité. Mais on ne vit pas sa vie entière dans un berceau. 